Hello and welcome back to part 14 of my video tutorial series showing you how to make your own cartoon from start to finish with Toon Boom Harmony Premium. If you've just joined us, we've been building this rig, so I highly recommend you go check out the previous videos if you haven't already, if that's something you might be interested in. In the last video, we finalized this rig, and in this video, we are going to be doing the turnaround angles. Before we do the turnaround angles though, there are a few more things I just want to do to the rig before we go ahead. So what I've done, I've added this colour card, which you can do by pressing enter, searching for colour card and adding it that way. And then you can click on this yellow square and change the colour and that will just allow you to see it on a different background when you render it. So if we go into the render view here by pressing this blue flower, can see our character. Now the changes that I want to make, if we zoom in, you can see the the lines here, they kind of vary in thickness. And that's because of the overlay lines. So the lines are appearing a little thicker where the line and the overlay line are on top of each other. And that's because of the anti-aliasing effect. It's not too bad because our lines are quite thick and it won't be much of an issue the closer the camera gets to the character. If your line work is really thin, it's going to be more noticeable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select each limb. I'm just going to ungroup these limbs, ungroup these parts here. And I'm just going to put a cutter underneath each of the overlays on the arms and the legs. So we'll do the arm upper overlay and the arm lower overlay. And then we'll do the same for the other arm and the legs. So just put a cutter under all of those overlay lines. And then we're gonna inverse mask the overlay lines to the other parts of the limbs. So you've got the arm lower here and we are gonna mask that the arm upper. Then we're gonna double click it, which will invert it. And that means the overlay will only appear when the lower arm is in front of the upper arm. So you won't get the lines changing thickness. And we're just gonna do that the other way around as well. And then we've got the leg. So leg lower, we'll be masking that overlay line. And then the leg upper, masking lower. So now when we go into render view, we've got nice clean lines. <clears throat> if you wanna neaten up your node view more, you can rename these to LA, CA, and you can do that for the overlays and the un underlays as well. So that will just give you a little bit more space, make things look a little bit neater. Um, something I do want to mention as well is this add prefix or suffix. So for example, if I selected this foot, and this leg lower. You can select if you want the suffix or the prefix. So in this case, it is the suffix. So if we wanted to change this 01, for example, type in 01 there, because that's what we want to remove. And if we wanted to replace it with 02, press OK. It will automatically change those for multiple nodes, if that's something you need to do. And then we'll carry on with the turnaround angles. And I'm just gonna take this and turn that off for now. So if we bring back our character turnaround that we made a few videos back. Now I've had a few comments say, um, how do you do the different angles for the character? Do you need to make a whole new rig? And that's actually something I wondered as well when I first started. But the way you do the turnaround is we will put each pose on its own keyframe. You don't need to make a whole new rig, which is the good news. To make the other angles, all you have to do is rearrange different elements and for the different shapes, you can either use the deformers to change it or you can make new substitutions. So we've got five angles here. However, there's gonna be eight in total because we're gonna be doing a full 360. And these three angles are just going to be flipped. And we might need to make more changes to this rig as we go, but that will become obvious as we're doing the turnaround angles. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the master peg, it's collapsed at the moment, and I'm just gonna press F6 on it, just in case there were any extra nodes that we had made previously that we haven't keyframed. And I like to start with the back pose first, and then have it go to the front pose. 
and then we can put the flipped angles at the end. So what I'm gonna do is I am just gonna copy this keyframe five times and then we're gonna work backwards. So this keyframe here is gonna be this angle. So I'm gonna get our character turn around. It didn't have a peg on it, so I've put a peg on it. And all I'm gonna do is nudge it over to the left so that the neck is lined up. That's a good middle point. So let's just nudge that over there like that. And let's put it in front of our character. And we're just gonna bring that transparency up a little bit. Let's try 65, maybe 75. And we can lock that. Make sure we're on this keyframe. And we're just gonna move everything to match the turnaround angle here. So you might be tempted to like take each eye and move it like that. However, you always wanna move the highest peg. And the reason for that is if I move this eye and then I go and move the other eye and then I move the mouth and then I go up to the face peg, you can see that the center of the peg where the pivot point is has remained there. And that's because you've moved the children rather than the face master peg. So always keep that in mind when you are moving elements about. So we're gonna press B or we can select our face peg. And I'm just gonna bring it over to about there. And then I can just start adjusting these here. I am gonna squash that mouth down just a touch and I might skew it a little bit as well just because it is slanted. And then with this eye, I think I'll do the same. This is the master peg for the eye. I'm gonna squeeze that down. I'm gonna move the pupils over like that. I might bring that eye over here just because I don't really like the way it's being cut off like that. And I'm gonna bring that eye a little bit closer to that one, that mouth back, the eyebrow forward. So now we've got our quarter angle. And you'll notice that the, the head starts to slant back as he turns around. So pretty sure we've got a deformer in this. So if I select that deformer, move this point back, just to match that shape. And it's a little bit higher than the concept. And let's just bring back our color card so we can have a look. That's looking pretty good. And this line here has to be moved. Make sure you do match the jaw. And then we can move our antenna, move that back. That's got a deformer as well. I'm gonna click that button so that I can select both of those handles that like that. So as he's turning around, he's gonna get thinner. So I'm just gonna work from the top down. I'm gonna move that pupil over there actually. And this neck hole, I'm going to adjust as well. Just move that point over there. This sun symbol, I'm gonna squash it and just move it over. So this torso is thinner. So I'm going to use the deformers just to bring it in just a touch. This is quite a simple body shape, so I can just use the deformers. But if you've got quite a complex torso, you can just um, make a new substitution for it. However, um, it's nice to use deformers where possible because if you are doing interpolations between the angles, they will just change shape instead of snapping to different substitutions. I'm gonna take this arm, including the shoulder, and I'm gonna bring it in front of the torso. So I'll bring that in front of there. For some reason, the line is disappearing for that upper arm. So let's go and investigate what's going on. Oh yes, yeah, because we've had our overlay layer cut by the arm lower, but we need it to be cut by the arm lower and the auto patch of the torso, I do believe. So let's plug that into there. And then there we go, that's bloody fixed it. That's because we were messing with that overlay. Yeah, I'm gonna bring this arm in front, bring back our in around. We'll just put it about there, I think, and just compare it to the other angles as well. We will move that shoulder down, and we can also use the deformer as well. You can see because our shoulder has come down a bit, uh, we need to adjust the torso, so let's bring that down. And we'll take this arm, and we'll just move it here. And this shoulder, we'll move it and again, the same thing for this shoulder. So the upper body is done now. So these legs are gonna come closer together. So we'll select that leg and we will move it over. We can also move it up as well. We'll do the same for this leg. Move that over. Let's make this hip a little bit more central. And we can use the deformers again, just to move that. So with this foot, it might be tempting to just flip it. However, um, I mentioned interpolations earlier. 
So let's let's show an example. So if I paste that there, and then I make another keyframe here by pressing F6, and I take that foot and I flip it. Then I'm going to interpolate it by pressing this here. And you can see the Toon Boom isn't just going to magically make it morph into the other shape. It's going to actually flip. So it's always better to make a new substitution rather than flipping it. Because otherwise it will be really frustrating to fix that every time while you are animating. And likewise with the leg as well. Always use the deformers or new substitutions if you can. Luckily my legs are symmetrical. So I don't need to do that, I only need to worry about the foot. So, I am going to make a new drawing for this foot. I'm going to press Alt-Shift-D and make a new one. And I am going to flip it, but I'm not going to flip it on the peg with this one. I'm going to use the Select tool. I'm going to select the art, make sure this button is clicked, apply to line and colour art. Select all of that, and then we can flip the art and just move it over. And then we will rotate it to parallel with that back line there. And because we flipped it, we need to make a new deformer for it. So if I show the deformer, you can see it's the old one. So let's click this button here, create new deformation chain. And then we're just going to make a new one. Boom! Done. I'm just going to change this just to be slanting up that way. So you can see on the concept design, there's a little bit of a line um, coming in front here. So I don't think we've got an overlay for our hip, just got some auto patches. So we can put an overlay in, and let's put a composite here, we can call it hip comp. Take the line, copy it onto the overlay, and I'm actually going to put that on the leg composite, so it's just over this leg, and then I can edit that overlay so that it comes in front. It is clash, clashing up with that leg line, so we could take that leg, we could just move it down like that. Or you could just edit the leg so the overlay is a little bit thinner. I might put a slight taper on that actually. Press control to add a control point there. I'll just move that. And that is the quarter view pretty much done. We do need to add a new hand substitution, but we'll do that at the end. Something I might do actually, just edit this hand. Just so this part is rounded, so I found that just easier to work with. I'm just going to amend the art for that hand just to bring it up. Alright, so that is the quarter view done. There's a little bit of a, a gap in this head here. So we can't make a new substitution for it because they're synced to this mouth. Um, you could always make a new set of mouths and have a gap here. However, what I think is best is put a mask in. So let's do that. So I'm going to come over to the head. I am going to... I'll just put it on this comp. Press Control R. This is going to... Let's just call it Neck Head Mask. Put a peg on that. The parent peg of this mask is going to be the head. Let's plug that in there. And it's going to be a handle. Let's plug it into our handles comp or control comp, whatever you want to call it. Get a bit more room here. We've got our head mask and... I'm just going to make an ellipse, the mask colour, that, shrink it down just a little bit like that. And this is just to mask the line. Um, okay, this is on, so that is on our line layer. And then for this one, I'm going to bring that in and I will colour it our handle colour. So now we've got the mask on the line layer and we've got the handle on the overlay. So the overlay I'm going to put there. The mask disappears, and we're going to get our line art. This is going to be masking the headline, or the jawline, should I say. So I'm going to make a cutter for our overlay, like that there. So now you can see that you can control how much of that line appears. What you can also do is make a new substitution, and with this new substitution, it's not going to have a mask, and we will also color it a different color. We'll call it con off and we'll change that color to a red. And we'll fill that in. So now you can turn it on and off just in case it gets in the way. It's easier to do that. So there we go. All right, quarter view done. Now it's time for the side view. So it's easier to work from the quarter view. So we're just gonna control paste that. 
gonna F6 these again because I did make some new modes. And then we're gonna take our character turn around again. We'll unlock it with that button there. That's the lock button, unlock button. And we're just gonna move it. Let's make it behind, behind him for now just so we can see where the neck is. Bring that back in front. And then we can lock it again. So I'm gonna take this head and I'm actually going to rotate that. Then use the deformer on this to bring it back. And it looks like it's breaking there. I'm just gonna have a look in the render view to see how it looks. And yeah, that looks all right. Now we'll move that back. We'll take the whole face, just like we did before. And I'm just gonna squeeze it down a little bit and I'm just gonna move it over here. Bring our pupil. I am gonna turn this off to bring back that line. I'm gonna take this arm and I'm just going to bring it over here, just nearly into the middle. I think what I'll do for the shoulder is, because I don't need this shoulder anymore. The arm has gone over the body, so you're not going to need it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn that off and press uh, Control Shift R to make a blank substitution for it so that it goes bye bye. I'm going to take this arm. I'm just going to bring that center. Again, same thing with that shoulder. Control Shift R. We're going to take our logo. We'll squash it down a little bit more. And then we'll just bring it over there. Skew it a little bit as well. Actually, I think I'm going to skew it for this one as well. So now we've got an issue here where the torso is angular. And if you take these deformers, because we've started with an angular shape, if I try and straighten it out, it's not going to look great um, and it's just going to look a little bit weird. So we're going to make a new substitution for it. So Control Shift B and for this one, I'm going to make a new deformation chain for it. And I'm going to go into the contour editor. Actually, first I'm going to do the select tool. I'm going to select all that torso and then I'll just bring it down, make it a bit thinner and we can just manipulate these points so that it matches we can deform this neck hill. And I'm just gonna move that down a bit just so we don't have this break. Yeah, that's that's the body shape that we want. And we don't even need that overlay anymore actually because again, the arm is in front. Um, I'm gonna take that display and shove it onto the torso and I'm gonna make a new deformer for that. So yeah, we've got our side torso. Again, we'll do the hands the end take our leg I'll just move it to the middle and it is coming back slightly move that back I'll do the same with the other leg and now we're gonna have to make a new substitution for this hip as well just like what we did with the shirt because we've got that angular part but that's all good what I'm gonna do with this leg actually is just move it backwards just so we've got that line showing because in my concept design got this line that goes all the way through but because we've done that we're gonna have to take that arm and we're gonna have to move that back so that it is behind the leg let's take that leg bring it back and you can see that for some reason that shoe oh there we go because it wasn't in its default position so yeah we'll take that leg and we'll move that back as well these feet need to change so we can just use the deformers actually because these are really simple feet so the deformers should be fine all right looking groovy so yeah let's put a new substitution on this so it's always a case of you know try not to flip anything because it might be tempting to you know take that front view and then be like oh for the back view it's exactly the same except the feet and the hands change and you put the face behind the head that's not gonna translate very well you know if you need the character turning around while you're animating something i do want to do with the other eye actually which is this one is just to number one make it as close to that face as possible and also squeeze it down really thin and um, the reason i'm doing that is because i'll show you take a quarter view let's take that side view and then let's interpolate that so you can see that that eye is getting thinner as it goes outside of the face and that kind of just gives the illusion that it's wrapping around the head okay so now that we've done the side view we can do the back quarter view I might speed up some of this because a lot of it is just doing the same thing which is moving elements about and reshaping them our character sheet over okay so we're gonna take our side view make sure it's collapsed 
then we'll paste it over to there to work from. I'm going to go to the head egg. I'm going to press O on the keyboard to jump to that. I'm going to go to the quarter view and we're just going to paste it there because it's essentially the same shape as the quarter view there. And then we will go to our antenna, do the same with that. Um, with this eyebrow, you'll notice that it's, because it's not masked to the face, it's floating in front of the face. So what you can do is you can squash it down, just bring it over there. If you wanted to, you could just take it behind and then push it back. However, what that will do when you're interpolating it from the two angles is it will just pop back behind the head. So it might be a better idea to bring it forward and we could just make a blank substitution for it there. So now with this face, I'm just going to squish it down and we're just going to bring it out of view. And those two eyebrows, we will just... We'll just make a blank shape for that one. So we've got the head done. And now the good thing is for this body, we can just reuse the front body. So we'll bring that in to bring the arm over here. Now we need to bring the shoulder back. So let's find that shoulder. And what we're going to do is we are going to make a new substitution. I'm going to copy and paste that one. And I'm going to take the art of this. I'm going to flip it and I'm also going to make a new chain for it and I'm going to move the art where the pivot is so you can see the pivots there and let's put a new deformer in here so now that we've got our new shoulder we're going to take this arm and we're going to move it over to there then we can go up the hierarchy and move that arm into place that arm is about there and I think this body has been deformed from the side view so we are going to fix that by pressing B to go up to the deformer and we're going to reset that current keyframe. There we go, we're going to take this, I'm going to squeeze it down, just push it out of view and I'll make a blank shape for it as well. Then we need to do the same for this arm, making sure to go up the hierarchy to the shoulder level, not just the arm level. And with this neck shape, you're not going to see the top, so we're just going to go into the drawing and get rid of that line there. Let's change back to our wider one for the waist. Then this leg is going to be over here. This one will be over here. And then with the feet, again we'll do the hands at the end. I might with the neck just make that slightly higher. Alright, and then we can copy and paste our master over to here and we're on the last angle. Bizarre. Take the head from the front. Same with that antenna. Bring that down. But yeah, that arm is going to be in front of the body. And we need to make sure this is as symmetrical as we can get it. You've also got a mirror button as well, so you can do that. I need to make a new foot, just like we did for the other one. So you can just use this as a guide then. So for the rest of the turnaround, it's just using existing angles. So we got the front, we're going to take that, we're going to paste it, take the side angle and the back angle, or the back quarter angle. We don't need the back because we've already got it there. Something we will do actually, I'm just going to move these three keyframes down and I can do that by pressing shift and plus and that will move all the keyframes that are on the right side, this red marker here, down and then minus will move them back up. So I'm going to take the front view and I'm actually going to paste it. Um, and all of these I'm going to flip. So now you can see I've got a full turnaround. And the reason I flipped that front view is because is for if the character looks to the other side to prevent things flipping as much as possible. But I'll talk more about that when we start animating. So yeah, these are all our angles. If you wanted to do more angles, like I mentioned earlier, you can simply space these keyframes out a bit more. So for example, the front view, then you can tween it. So now you can see as I tween it, it's moving to the side view, but there's a lot of snapping going on. So you would have to turn all of these into keyframes 
And you can turn these into keyframes by clicking this button here and putting in one. That will change all of those. And it would just be a case of changing everything so that it all matches up. So yeah, all, the, all we need to do is do the new hands. You can see those handles are following the legs. So on the back of you, um, they're on the other side. That's fine because most of the time your character will be facing the camera. So there we go. I just want to do some finishing touches. So in that concept art, we've got some white lines here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to move it just above that. And we can select that, right click it, arrange center back. So that's the turnaround done. And you can see that we've got some substitution swapping out here. So to fix that, you can just select the last keyframe, go to the end, press F5, just, I don't know, 1000. So we're not quite done yet. The next video is going to be testing the rig. We're going to be putting him in different poses, which are going to be varying levels of complexity. So we'll do some simple poses, some more complex poses, and that will just allow us to figure out if we need to do any fixes on this rig. So I will see you in the next video. Goodbye. Thank you so much for watching. If you do have any questions, you can leave them down in the comment section below, or you can ask me live over on Twitch where I stream this stuff five days a week. If you enjoyed the video and you found it helpful, please feel free to like and subscribe. Your support really does go a long way. And if you want to be notified of any future videos, you can click that notification bell. Thanks again. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.